Do you know a steel beam should be designed as a beam column when two unequal spans of beam are connected to the column in simple construction or when beams are rigidly connected to the column? In this lecture, you will learn about design of beam columns as per Eurocode 3. This is part 15 of lecture series on steel design. For other parts, please have a look at the description down below. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London university. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. Before watching this lecture on beam column design, I strongly suggest that you watch design of compression members and design of unrestrained beam. The link is down below in description. In this lecture, I will talk about steel beam to columns and design process according to Eurocode 3. The learning outcomes of this lecture will be that by the end of this lecture, you will learn in-plane behavior of beam columns, members subjected to bending and axial compression, a simple formula for columns in simple construction, and design process to Eurocode 3. A member which is subjected to compression and bending at the same time is termed as beam column. Normally, interaction is needed between moments and compression. This is achieved by interaction formula between these two values. And interaction can be treated as elastically or plastically. The question is that what causes moments in columns? In buildings, most of the time, joints are pinned and bracing is provided to resist lateral stability. Column moments are produced by beam reactions acting through eccentricities. And most of the time, it happens that if you have unequal spans in columns, or if you have a corner column where it is supporting a beam on two sides only, and other two sides are free. Most of the time, columns are designed for high axial load, but very low moments. This is the eccentricity I was talking about. When you attach a beam with the column, it has this bolt line and it will have this eccentricity as well. And if beam reactions are unequal on both sides of the column, it will induce a nominal moment. Now, the one approach is to neglect this moment when axial force dominates. In most of the buildings, the joints are simple. Columns mainly carry axial force. But a general practice is to take this nominal moment of column resulting from beam's shear force and multiply it with the eccentricity. So this is the formula. If the beam is attached with the minor axis, then this will be T W over 2 rather than H over 2. But moments can develop in portal frames as well, where joints are rigid. And these portal frames, they carry heavy moments in the plane of frame but very low axial forces. Now, joints between portal frames are rigid. It means that they transfer moment from the beams to the column. In rigid frame, such as portal frames, moment happens due to fixity of joints, which means that moments are transferred from beams to columns. This is the example of a column section, which is resisting moment about major axis, and no moment is happening in ZZ axis which means that the moment pattern is a triangular pattern in this column. Now, rigid frames can happen in multi-story buildings as well, but it is not very common. So if you have rigid joint, in that case, moment can develop and we can design a column as a beam column. Simple in-plane behavior. Now, what does it mean by uniaxial bending? A bending applied only in one principal axis is termed as uniaxial bending. It means that load is applied, axial load is applied, and bending is happening in one direction. It could be major axis direction or it could be minor axis direction. This is termed as uniaxial bending of column. On the other hand, biaxial bending, it means that column is under axial load and bending is not only applied in major axis, but it is applied in both major and minor axis. And this is induced by lateral loading. It could be wind, it could be moment. In addition to that, the axial compressive load, it amplifies the bending moment as well. And this is termed as second order effects. Normally, second order effects are 
taken into account by multiplying the actions with amplification factor or second order analysis is carried out in any structural analysis software. How do we work out resistance of the section? When a section is applied to compressive stresses and the same section is applied to bending as well, it will have combination of compressive and bending stresses. The resistance will depend on if the plastic neutral axis is in the web or in flange. Now part A where plastic neutral axis is in web which is over here in this one only this portion which is yellow is under compression and blue portion is in bending and you will use this formula to work out the reduced moment capacity on the other hand part b if the plastic neutral axis is within the flange it means that this yellow portion is carrying compression now and blue portion is carrying bending. It means that we have lots of compression, but very less bending. And you will use these formula to work out the moment. What does it mean by plastic neutral axis? Plastic neutral axis is something which bisects the section into two equal areas if it is under application of axial load. But when moment is applied in addition to axial load, then plastic neutral axis no longer bisects the section into two equal areas. And certainly when moment is applied in addition to axial load, the moment capacity of the section is going to be reduced. So when a section is subject to axial load and moment is applied then the moment capacity of the section is normally reduced and it is less than the plastic capacity of the section as the section has now to support the axial load as well the relationship between moment and axial load is expressed in non-dimensional form which is m over mpl is equal to f n over npl and small n is equal to n over npl entirely we'll be talking about this relation now p and a will no longer divide the section into two equal areas because the section is now under combined action of axial load and moment. Now, this is the relation where you have N over NPL and M over MPL. N is axial capacity of the section, where M is the moment capacity of the section. When we use this Euro code 3 equation for reduced moment capacity, when neutral axis in web, you can find the ratio of N over NPL and M over over MPL here. Now here the section is under full plasticity and the major axis bending is happening minor axis is not happening at all. Now the design process for sections under combined action of moment and axial forces. For class 1 and 2 sections, applied loading should be less than or equal to M and RD, where M and RD is the reduced plastic moment due to presence of axial forces. And we will talk about it in a minute. Now this class states that for doubly symmetrical sections, I and H sections, the reduced plastic moment is not calculated calculated if these conditions are satisfied. If applied load is less than or equal to 0.25 of NPL RD, which is the axial capacity, then we don't check it. And if we satisfy another equation for bending in major axis direction, then we simply don't check it. For minor axis, we have this formula where NPL RD is simply AFY over gamma M0. The reduced plastic moment M and RD about YY axis is given by this formula, where N is equal to NED applied load divided by NPLRD, which is the plastic resistance. M and RD, this reduced plastic moment should be less than the plastic moment. This is equation 6.36. And for ZZ bending, we use another equation. So don't worry about these equations. They are included in extracts to Euro code 3 and I'll provide link to this presentation as well. Now these equations are only valid for uniaxial bending means that when bending is happening in the plane under consideration it's not valid for biaxial bending when major axis and minor axis moment is not zero. When bending is happening in two directions then simply we can use the, this equation. Now these equations are valid for biaxial bending. Alpha and beta have got values but for simplicity alpha and beta these are constant they can be conservatively taken as unity to work out the reduced bending moments again the clause numbers in euro code are given over here now design process for beam columns we have a very long formula which is not suitable for hand calculations and it is suitable for computer generated outputs or 
we can prepare Excel sheet. So there are two cases. Stability of uniform sections should be checked. If members are not likely to have torsional deformations, these are circular hollow sections and any tubular sections. And when members are likely to have torsional deformations, these are I sections, H sections. In addition to this, the the cross section should satisfy the requirements of resistance of cross sections given in 6.2. Now these are two equations which must be satisfied, but there's a very long process to work out these equations. These factors KYY, KYZ are interaction factors for flexural and lateral torsional buckling. These factors can be determined by method one in appendix A or method two in appendix B. Method two is the most common one that we use in the UK and both equations must be satisfied. The second order effect should be allowed for and the cross-section resistance of each section should be checked. Uh, this table first is, is the one for tubular sections and the second table is for I and H sections. And then from here, we work out these factors. As you can see that these factors cannot be determined using hand calculations. So Excel sheet must be used. And again, this table B3, it, it will will give the value of the C factors using the moment diagrams. The most common one is this one where you have uniform distribution of moment. If you like, you can conservatively use these factors which come from this steel designers manual from the Steel Construction Institute. I'll put the link down below in description. Probably you can use a little bit of hand calculations. Otherwise, this method is not suitable for hand calculations. Now, what is suitable for hand calculations? We have this simplification for simple construction. When the moment is happening in ZZ axis, we can use this formula where KZY is equal to 1 and KZZ is equal to 1.5, where this 1.5 is a shape factor. Shape factor means that plastic section modulus divided by elastic section modulus. It means that for head sections or for rectangular sections, they will have 50% reserve capacity from plastic to plastic region. NBZRD is flexural buckling about Z axis, MBZRD is again about Z axis. Now we have a similar formula in old British codes as well. Mainly, we will be using this formula to check beam columns. This equation 6.2, which you saw earlier, it can only be applied when the column is hot roll I or head section. The cross section is class 1, 2 or 3 under compression. The bending moment diagram is linear and column is laterally restrained in Y, Y, Z, Z direction at each flow, but unrestrained between floors. Psi value is less than or equal to minus 0.11. And for pin ended columns where psi is zero, the following alternative criteria must be satisfied. NED over NBRD should be less than or equal to 0.83, where NBYRD is equal to key Y AFY over gamma M1.